Hello and welcome to another tutorial walkthrough in Omnisphere. And this time we're going to look at the stack mode within Omnisphere. There's various performance uh, parts of Omnisphere and to get to these you just click on the multi and you've got the live and stack. We'll come to live in another uh, video at a later stage. Tonight Today we're just going to look at the stack mode. Now, to actually get stack mode up and running, um, if we just go back to Mixer and click on this, we need to load sounds into each of these little segments. To keep it simple, we'll just look at um, two channels, uh, channel one and channel two. We'll may go a bit further later on, but first of all, what we need to look at is for a pad sound, so I'm not gonna just, I'll just pick things at random here. Uh, and in part two, this is a quick way of actually loading a patch into another part, is just clicking where it says patch browser, where it says part one, part two. That pertains to these parts here, part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the part one, part two. So if we went back into here and go to part two, it saves you going back to the uh, mixer page menu every time. So we'll just pick uh, something, uh, pulsars, I don't know what that sounds like, but we'll go with it. Uh, and then if I just close that. Now if we go to multi and just click on stack mode, you can see here we've got four lines. Each line represents uh, the channel that the patch is loaded into. As we've got nothing loaded into three and four, it'll just show as default. Now we've got Cream in Motion 2 in um, channel one, and Lee Pulsars in channel two. So to engage my stack mode, switch it on, and essentially. So those sounds play together. Um, if you want to split the keyboard, so you have the pad in the left side, bass end, the lead in the right hand, or the upper end, all you need to do is click and hold at the corner and just drag it across. Now what could have been helpful, and I don't know if Spectrasonics will pick this up at some point, is to have a little indicator to see that you've actually grabbed the corner, because as you see nothing comes up, so you can't tell if you've actually successfully um, caught the slider or not. Put that aside, we'll make it middle C. And that's middle C. So in the left hand, we have the pad. And in the right hand, Pulsars. So what you can have then is so you've got two different sounds playing. Now what I'm going to do is just going to swap out that pulsars lead um, <clears throat> because it's it's not sufficiently different enough. So let's see. So go back to multi. So now we've got a, a distinct lead sound. So that's one way of splitting the keyboard. Now another way you see these where it says notes, velo and CC. Well, notes is what it's set to now, so it splits at a particular note. Velo is the velocity, so the harder you hit the key, depends on which sound you get. So if, for example, we play softly, we're getting the pad sound and see how much velocity you're putting into the keys. You get a nice little bar graph at the bottom of the page. Now if I hit harder, I get the lead sound. So that's a great way of adding a bit of difference depending on how 
uh, heavy you hit the keys. Now there's another mode called CC. Now this is um, default mapped. Kind of think of the word then for a minute. Been a long day. Um, it's a default mapped to your mod wheel. Now I've got my mod wheel um, linked to a pedal, on the, so my mod wheel when I push it, push the pedal forward, goes forward and pull it back, it goes back to zero. And as you can see, there's a little graph at the bottom to tell you where you are. And if you follow that graph. That's why I wanted something different to uh, sound-wise to demonstrate the change. So we through that again. That's the pad. So it moves, but it's quite jerky. So what you need to do to make it smooth is let it overlap a bit. And if you click in the top left hand corners, don't move it on there, you can alter the gradient of the crossover. So this should be smoother now. See, it's not as harsh when it moves over because you've got a slight overlap. Um, and as you can probably gather, you could quite carried away with this because if I click on here and say I want an ARP BPM uh, Bat Boy Attack or GP Classic ARPs, that's usually a good one so close that and I go back to stack mode now at point this moment in time the arpeggiates will play through the whole lot So a bit of a stranger thing is going on there. And what you could do, um, if you only wanted the ARP to play in a certain period, is uh, trying to find the right area for the zone for moving. So if you don't quite get into the bottom corners as you saw then, it starts making that uh, gradient slope, so got to watch that. So you could have the art playing only at crossover point. So uh, just performance-wise, you could have. fantastic but it gives you an idea of well hopefully an idea of what can be achieved very simply with stack mode so we'll leave that there for now um, all I will say before I go is if you want to change what controls it so if you don't want the model wheel to actually change uh, whereabouts in the sound you are you just click on where it says CC1 <clears throat> and what you need to do then is map another controller on your keyboard or pedal or uh, control surface that you have to another CC number and select that and use that to change the sound. So that's stack mode in Omnisphere. If you enjoy this video give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell in the top as it looks at the screen top right hand corner and you'll be notified of when the next video is uploaded and always uh, check out the blog on my website at www.biodiode.com the link is in the description below uh, where you'll find hints, tips and techniques on how to hopefully improve your music and uh, get you on the road to creating your own so thank you for now and I'll catch you again sometime soon <laughs>